everybody and welcome to our first of the season's Positive Economics webinar. My name is Susan Hayes Cullerton and I hope that you're all keeping really, really well this evening. Um, it's a delight to see that we have as many people here and, uh, and I know that you're tuning in from all over. So, uh, so we're really glad to have you. So uh, first and foremost, what I think would be a good idea is if you just chatted in uh, ju just just send a message in there and just say where you're tuning in from and uh, secondly just to make sure that you can both see and hear me okay so if you just uh, just go into the chat go into the chat or into the questions and answers pod I'll be able to see both and you might just then let me know if you can see me and also if you can hear me uh, that's all I'm just gonna just gonna wait and see now that that has happened there for everybody And um, then we will get started and get right in. Uh, okay, so I'm hearing Mayo, Tralee, Watford. I can see and hear you. Dublin, Karen, you all good. Killarney, Kerry, can hear and see you. Hello, greetings from Cork. All is well with screen and sound. Okay, okay, loads and loads and loads have, have come in there. Okay, wonderful. I am delighted to uh, to hear that. Um, and, and it's also it's also wonderful as well that a number of you have actually mentioned um, what schools you're from and everything. OK, so let's get straight into it then. Um, right. Let's start off with what we what we don't know, because that's 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 we need to be clear on that. And then we'll also talk about what we do know. Now, as of this evening, what I know about the project is exactly what you know, which is that the um, various different documents. Well, the one document has been issued. We're going to talk through that tonight. Um, that has been issued, but that is as much information as I have about the project at the moment. Now, what I don't have is I don't have the digital completion booklet. Um, I would imagine that that will be coming out shortly. So I don't have that. Obviously, we don't have a sample paper. There's a lot of things that we don't have. But what I'm going to do tonight is I'm solely, solely, solely going to focus on what I do know about. Simply just to shout out there to the teachers, um, I'm sure you're aware that the PDST is running workshops over the next while. So, of course, there is an added resource there for sure. But uh, I do, as I say, just want to mention that I'm dealing with the information that I have this evening and we'll make the most of that. OK, so just wanted to, to clarify that uh, from the very beginning to let you know that that is the position in which I'm coming from. Now, let's actually take a quick look through the document itself. There's a lot that I, I, that I wanted to take you through this evening. And of course, feel free to put in your questions, etc. I'm happy to take a look at those and to, to respond to them as we go. Now, here's what we've got. I'm just going to uh, zoom in here. So what we can see is that uh, the same project is given for both higher and ordinary level. OK, so you don't actually have to decide um, which level that you're doing in advance. This is another key thing to know, which is the research study must be submitted to your class teacher by the 22nd of December. OK, so we're aware of that. As I mentioned, we don't have the digital completion booklet yet, so we don't have that information. But hopefully, hopefully soon and um, that we'll have that and I'll be able to, to talk to you about that when you do have it. And if we scroll on down here, um, we know that the report must not exceed 1500 words you must provide at least two relevant and reliable sources of information and data. I'm going to give you loads of those tonight for a start, but there's like a million, <laughs> a million different um, references that you could put in there. So we're going to, going to have lots and lots of those. As you can see, your report must be presented in the digital completion booklet. Again, we don't have that yet, but just so you're aware of that. And then there's the usual stuff about not copying, etc. OK, now. This here is where, of course, where it all, all comes together. Now, first of all, the theme is, as far as I can see, there's three key things that you need to look at in here. Number one is the impact of COVID-19. And for any of you who was on the webinars with me last year, you know that I would have gone through this each and every single webinar. I would have spoken to you about what the impact of COVID-19 was and, and, and how it continues to be. So. That certainly is something um, that, that has been there right throughout. OK, but anyway, we're going to talk about this and, and particularly it's important that the COVID-19 element is incorporated. However, you also clearly need to talk about this. 
and that is sustainability. That is, as you can see here, it's at the core. It's mentioned here, it's mentioned here, it's mentioned here, and it's mentioned here. So sustainability has to be front and center um, of the research team. Now remember, chapter three of the book is all around sustainability. So that is, it's all, and I, that's where I'm going to really make sure that I'm focusing tonight with you as we talk about fiscal policy, but particularly that element of sustainability needs to be core. And then the third thing is whatever it is that you're going to choose to look at, whether it's the individual or the business or the, or the government angle. Okay, so you need the impact of COVID-19, you need uh, sustainability and you need whatever element of the uh, research topics that you're going to take on directly. That's the way in which that you need to look at it. Now, um, and of course, that's it. That's that's as much as we've got. And uh, and I don't know how much more, as I say, apart from ultimately um, the digital completion booklet that you're really going to get. And of course, there is this link, which I'm going to take you through as well. Now, I told you, um, I told you back, oh, I told you months ago, that Brian and Trudy, the, my two co-authors, and I have been working together to put together a research booklet for you. That's done, and it is uh, ready to go. So Edco, I was talking to them earlier on today, and they assure me that it will be available for you on Edco Learning. We didn't publish it in on paper because we didn't um, we didn't know what was coming. We didn't know the way in which the research topic would be presented and so on. So it will be uh, available to view for those of you who have the main book on Edco Learning. But what I did want to share with you is this is a quick guide about what we feel anyway is a, a way to take on the project. As you can see that there are 10 source, 10 key steps. And what I'm going to do is I am going to I'm going to go through each of these um, with you. OK. Um, so let me just sorry, just go back there now. I'm going to go back over here. So first thing to do is get the topic and break it down. Now, we're going to have a chat about that this evening in particular. How do we break a topic down? And um, I'm going to do this from the government angle. Then over the next couple of webinars, uh, I'm going to take the other angles as well. But when, remember, you need to take into consider consideration COVID-19 and the sustainability, that has to be core, and your other angle. So I'm going to look at the government angle, which is research topic two tonight. But And by the way, I'm not going to be overly instructive. That would take the complete fun out of it for you all. So I'm not going to be overly overly instructive but i do just want to give you a couple of things to consider so then the second thing is choose your economic concept and decide what angle to take in other words choose your line of inquiry now if i go back over here you can see that um, as you can see here each candidate is required to complete a research study and report on one of the following research topics in the context of a research theme and of course then down here we have what the research theme is and then you have your research topic, but it is a line of inquiry. If I search for the term here, you can see you are required to pursue an individual line of inquiry. Now in the booklet, this is the booklet here. Okay, uh, here's the booklet. You, we, we talk about that. Uh, we talk about it in detail. This is the booklet here as I'm showing it to you. These are my own notes here. Um, but we have all of this, you know, all of this in here about the, the steps, okay? So we have all about what is research, We've all about um, choosing a line of inquiry. So as you can see here, the first step in undertaking research is to choose an individual line of inquiry that relates to your chosen research topic. And this could be a relevant economic issue, problem or question. And then we talk about data collection methods. And, and there's no point in me taking you through the book. You'll have access to it shortly anyway. So as you can see, it's all in there. OK, it's all in there, the qualitative and the quantitative data. We talk about writing a research plan and how you can collect your research we talk about now this one i do want to mention to you because it relates to economic concepts every project of course will need an economic concept at least one of course you will because it's an economic project however do you know what's a really easy way of finding those is going to pop you over here to the book for a moment okay come over here to the book now if you scroll on down here look at what is at the start of every chapter every single one the learning outcomes. The learning outcomes relate to of the economic concepts that we cover. So the one I'm going to take you through this evening is chapter 12 all around government. Let's take a look there, for example, for a, a list of suggested 
economic concepts. That can be the way in which you look at how to um, identify those because you will need to link your project right back, your research back to an economic concept. Of course you do. It wouldn't be a research project otherwise. Uh, it, it really wouldn't. Okay. So as I mentioned, um, everything, everything that we have over here in the book is all there and all around uh, various different methods of collecting data, secondary research and primary research. As I say, there, there's no real point in me taking you through everything that's in here when you can do all of that yourself. But um, the, the, main, the main areas that we go through is here is the quick guide. So you choose your economic concept and decide what angle to take. Again, we'll have a chat about that tonight, but you will need an economic concept underpinning it. And a good way to look out for that is to take a look at the learning outcomes um, in the chapters and then that can give you some inspiration they won't be the precise wording you'll have to to put that together yourself but the actual economic concept like you know law of supply and demand like theory of, of um let's say opportunity cost like the idea of elasticity like the idea of as you can see in the in the booklet that we gave the four canons of taxation so whatever it might be okay whatever it might be they're all there now, of course, I don't know tonight whether you're tuning in as a fifth year or a sixth year. And of course, I know there's teachers and there's people who aren't who aren't either students or teachers joining in. So what I will say is to any of you fifth years who are joining, I'm understanding, of course, that your that your study of economics is, is probably very, very little so far. An exciting world away to yet. But I, I do want to make the point that, you know, it's it's um, don't don't worry about all that I'm saying as time goes on you'll be able to see all of those as and you'll be able to understand all of the topics that I just mentioned but to the leaving certs many of you would be familiar with a lot of what I've been talking about and uh, and therefore just remember those economic concepts the models and so on that's what the economic concept refers to then you have to decide on your research methods so again any of you who were on uh, webinars with me last year then you will know I went through both primary and secondary research then but of course, those of you who weren't, um, again, another world of <laughs> a world of wonder awaits you. So a research method refers to how you collect your data. Now I'm going to take you through a range. You can see them all up there at the top of my screen. They're already there for you. A range of secondary research methods, a range of different documents provided by very, very good, um, reliable and credible sources. They're all secondary research, but primary research is when you actually go out and you, you collect information yourself. Maybe it's a survey, maybe it's one-to-one -one interviews, and we've all that documented in the booklet about how, but that is primary research, and you need to, to decide on your research methods. Then, of course, you need to conduct the research. So I'm gonna, I've conducted some of it here this evening for you, um, and conducting the research means going out, you know, looking at or looking for different sources, and then from there, figuring out what you want to do next, um, figuring out maybe you want to use certain, maybe it's the CSO data you want to look at as opposed to the central bank, or maybe rather than talk about, you know, broadly employment, you want to talk about structural employment. So conducting the research is really the work involved in whittling down uh, your argument. Then you analyze your findings. So based on the information that you collect, both through secondary sources, which again are everything I'm going to show you here later on. So that's second-hand information or information that another body has collected. So when you collect that and you collect your primary research, which is where you go out and conduct your research yourself directly. So then you analyze your findings. So you, you look through those and you think, okay, well, what conclusions have I come up with? And how do I put all of this information together? Then here, as you can see here, then we also have using graphics to support your findings. Um, we find that, first of all, you guys are super, super, super talented when it comes to putting together visuals using existing technologies. Personally, I love the smart art graphics in PowerPoint. I love the templates that are in Google Slides. If you want to jazz it up even more, um, Canva is a super graphic design tool. Um, and, and there's so many more. There's so many more graphic technologies that are out there that are free and that are really easy to use and can be very colorful and can condense a lot of information down together. So I actually wrote that piece of the booklet, that particular part, and I wrote lots of other parts too. But just in that particular piece, I wrote about the various technologies that are there. 
in in the booklet so you'll be able to see those and uh, and figure out how to do that but this all comes at the latter stages then you draw conclusions so your final your final the line of inquiry is a question but then the conclusion is the answer so uh, whether the line of inquiry might be um how has COVID-19 affected the long-term sustainability of government finances, for example? And then the answer might be, well, arising from all of these various different data sources, it either has improved, it has disimproved, or it has not affected government finances. Okay, so that's your, your drawing your conclusions. Then, of course, you can make recommendations as well. And this is, so this is reflecting back on your experience, what might have you done differently or what would you suggest um, could be done to alleviate the situation, etc. So that's your making of recommendations. Cite your sources, super important. Oh my God, super important. Going back over here, that um, they say it up here, um, source. You must provide at least two relevant and reliable sources of information data. All secondary sources used must be acknowledged in the report. So this is where you cite your sources. We have a whole section in the booklet about how to reference properly. By the way, I am also a university lecturer, um, as is Trudy. Trudy is now as well. Trudy lectures in CIT, and I lecture at Ulster University. And when you can reference properly, it will save you so many marks <laughs> when you move on to third level. So that's uh, not just good for this, this project, but long afterwards. Um, okay. Then the last thing is do a spell check and a word count and remember that 1500 words is the max. Okay, so this is the 10 steps to taking care of your research study. And as I say, all of these steps are elaborated on in a lot more detail in the booklet. Okay, now I'm just going to stop for a moment there before I move on to the next section. And um, I just want to check in on the questions if there are any. Okay, yes, there are. Um, right, so uh, somebody says, um, thank you for doing this tonight. Can you give an example of a research topic, please? So we're going to have a chat around an area you can look at. I can't give a specific uh, example of a specific research topic because all of that's done in the book and I couldn't do it just, you know, as much justice here uh, this evening with you. But Peter, um, absolutely, that's all done in the book in, in detail. Um, Emmanuel says, would you be able to bring another country's COVID response into the report under any of the research topics? Uh, yes, you would, Emmanuel. Hmm. Yes, you would. So, um, I'm just trying to think now how you would specifically do that. Um, now, sorry, I've just seen there another comment pop up while I'm thinking of the answer to that. Uh, somebody just tells me there my screen isn't sharing. Um, is that the case? Could you see my my ten steps? Just just making sure that because uh, it says here on my audience view that I'm sharing. Yeah, okay, you can see it. Okay, that's 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 great. Okay, uh, so to go back to about the other countries, Manuel says, would you be able to bring another country's COVID response into the report under any of the research topics? Manuel, you would. You could do it under government because you could compare how this government has compared to another government but remember it has to be about sustainability that's that's in there to the core uh, Emer says does each student need a different line of inquiry well Emer, what i would say on that is let me go back to the research guidelines over here and if we go back over there i know i'm switching between screens but i'm just doing my best for you um is that it does need to be your own individual work authenticated by yourself your teacher and by your school management authority. So it does need to be your own work. And I would imagine if everybody does their own work, they'd have a different project. But there is so much scope, so much, so much, so much scope in this, um, a huge amount of scope that I, that I see for people do, taking on different work. Um, now, Tom says, do you have to do both primary and secondary research or is secondary enough on its own? Um, it's up to you, Tom, but I would say that, uh, like, certainly I remember asking the same question of my own master's in college, which I know isn't the same thing, but it's uh, primary research is always a good way of considering the truth of the secondary research and, and vice versa. So you see the guidelines, as I say, you have the same as me. So you can you can take a look and you can see for, see for yourself. Uh, okay, 
So then, uh, yeah, John said that my screen wasn't sharing. Thankfully, we, we've resolved that. Um, okay, so then another person says, when is the booklet out? I would imagine, Sarah, the next the next week, I would say. Um, Edco did did say that to me earlier on today because it's been it's been approved now for for all for for a while. Um, okay, so somebody says to me, how difficult is it to get 19 to 20 percent out of 20 percent of the research project? I haven't a clue, Jamie. I haven't a clue. I didn't set the paper um, or set the research project, and I I haven't been in contact with anybody who has. And of course, if I was, well, then obviously it wouldn't be wouldn't be fair in you. So I have I have no idea how difficult it is. I don't know how they're setting the standard for from that point of view um, about how difficult it is. What I will do is I will show you the marketing scheme. Uh, I can certainly do that. So Siobhan says, how much time would be required for the research study? I believe Siobhan, the number of hours has been released in the overall guidelines that were published before the summer. So I can check that. I'll just see if I have them. Um, Claire says, do resources have to be quantitative and quality, sorry, do resources have to be quantitative and qualitative? Claire, the answer to that is they don't have to be both. Because uh, you're asking me, do they have to, to be both? Um, but they do need to be substantiative. And of course, if you're going to be looking at something to do with numbers, it's much easier to have something quantitative. Whereas if it's qualitative, then it's it's going to be much more around how people feel and and various things like that. So um, you're just going to have to to make an argument about what you're picking and why. Uh, okay, so um, Ross says, how much of Ireland's 230 billion deficit is due to COVID? Now, I don't think we have a 230 billion deficit. I think it's closer to 30 there, Ross. Can you include this in the research study? I mean, you, you, you include what you feel is useful. Bear in mind, you've only 1,500 words. So when I was writing them, I wrote two examples of research studies for the book. And um, I went way over. Uh, I went way over and I had to pair it right back. So uh, so you can include whatever you feel is relevant, but everything needs to be relevant. Michelle says, are last year's webinars available somewhere? Yep, Michelle, they're all on positiveeconomics.ie. Um, then uh, Leston says, are you able to put the question from the business point of view? Are you acting as the business? I am going to say all you need to do there is just remember, consider it through the lens of the way in which this needs to be considered in a research study. If you look at this as your business, for example, you would that would be one form of primary research. You still need to have your secondary research and you still need other forms of primary research as well, because one voice isn't, you know, a whole is isn't a whole research set. Remember as well, less than um, that I mentioned, um, sorry, not you don't know this yet, but on the book, we also distinguish between a sample and a population, and that's what will really answer your question there. Um, Sarah says, thank you, you're welcome. Uh, Marion says, what's the difference between primary, primary and secondary research? Please call me Gerald. Okay, Gerald. So the difference between primary and secondary research is secondary research is research that is already done at second hand, okay? So that means it comes from the CSO, Central Bank. Um, it comes from the World Health Organization. It comes from various different sources. Whereas then primary, um, that comes from where it has to be done firsthand. So that is where you would conduct a survey. You would conduct individual um, um, interviews. You would conduct any of the other methods. So that's the, that's the difference between those two. Um, so Shauna says, I have 50 economic students. Uh, do you know how different the lines of inquiry have to be a lot or similar? Is this okay? I have no idea, Shauna. Uh, I can't answer that for you. Uh, all I know is that, again, going back to the wording, on the document is that it needs to be individual work and authenticated accordingly. Uh, Judy says, do they do it all in school? I uh, I would say, guessing not, Judy, but because um, much of this has to be done independently. But again, that's in the individual guidelines that were issued much earlier on in the summer. I think they were issued just before the summer. Um, ben says, in regards to written exam, do you know when we will get sample papers? I haven't a clue, Ben. Uh, I really don't know. I know a lot of people are looking for them, but I have no idea when, when they will be out. So Neve says, uh, 20 hours, I think. Um, okay, Neve, that's good to know. Emma says, is the project completed in fifth or sixth year and over what time period? Well, Emma, we can answer that for you. Um, because if you look over here, uh, you will just see 
that it says, uh, sorry, just give me a moment there, just go back again. It says, sixth, um, sorry, oh, I'll, t I'll tell you why that, that keeps happening is I'm trying to look at my chat and keep keep that up there so I can I can see see what everyone's asking me. So your research and study research study and report must be completed in term one of sixth year. Okay, there is your answer to that, and that is again from the research study document itself. Okay, so I'm just going to pop out here, uh, pop out the chat again. Okay, the research project is not marked. I believe it's just is uh, believe just the report. How does that work? Good question, John. Correct, you're right on that. The project isn't marked, it's just the report, and that's what the digital completion booklet, um, that is when you get that, then we'll see how 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 well how to answer how that works, which is the I know it's a question, <laughs> sorry, it's an answer to your question, but um it is the answer which is that we have to wait and see that. And you can see that numerous times in the briefing. Um now then Amelia says, is sustainability only in relation to the environment? Now, that's a big question, Amelia. And what I'm going to do is I am very conscious of time and I'm going to pop over and take a look at the document that the government, or that the, not the government, that the, that is issued within the guidelines. And, uh, and then you can see how we, uh, how, how we, we take, take it there. Lisa says, in relation to topic one, can you use something in a different country, a line of business, e.g. the airline industry in the UAE, for example, based on sustainability, of course, basically, does it have to be an Irish angle? Uh, let's go back and take the reading again. As I say, Lisa, I simply have what you have, but let's just go back over and see, does it say that it needs to be about Ireland only? So it says, um, now here's the theme. COVID-19 crisis resulted in many sectors of Irish society and the Irish economy changing and adapting dramatically in order to ensure the long-term sustainability of the country. The Irish government, the world of business and the world of work may face critical challenges um, in dealing with the crisis. So therefore, this is the question and it does relate to Ireland's economic, environmental and social sustainability. So now I'll leave it up to you to interpret that, but um, yeah, there seems to be a, a, a good number of, of points, points made in there. Now, um, thank you for all those questions and I'll, and I'll keep going and I will answer as many, of course, as I can. Uh, certainly, I will, I will do, do what I can. Um, so I'm just checking there my, my notes there, just Edco, as I say, confirming what, I, what I've told you. So what I'm going to do now is, is move into looking at fiscal policy broadly. Okay, that is, as I mentioned to you, what I promised to do tonight. And when you think about the government side of things, right? So when you think about Irish government policy, the government can have a policy on a lot of things, right? The government currently is conducting a very clear healthcare um, initiative around in ensuring you wash your hands, social distancing, and a range of other things, right? So that's health. But when it comes to economic policy, a lot of what they have is fiscal policy, right? And fiscal policy is simply the way a government taxes and spends. So one of the secondary resources that I mentioned for you this evening is this, and what this is, this is the Fiscal Monitor August 2020. So this is the most recent document issued by the government, which talks about where it's getting its money. So I downloaded that, and here it is. And in particular, here is what I thought you might be interested to see, is actually income tax here. Income tax um, in 2020 is just slightly behind where it was in 2019. In fact, total taxes in general are a little bit more, but slightly behind where they were in 2019. However, that is significantly behind where it was in 2019. Now, I know many of you are, people learn different ways. We have visual learners and we've all sorts of different learners. So I'm aware some of you are more numbers people. All the numbers are in that report, but some of you are visual people. And that's why I said I would specifically focus on this. The thing is though, is when it comes to sustainability, the question is, how does the government maintain a sustainable tax base? That in itself could be a research inquiry, which is how does the government maintain sustainability in its tax take when it comes to the impact of COVID-19? And that's an area that we, we discussed in the book in chapter 12 as well, is around economic sus sustainability. So you could, you know, there are so many angles you could take in this project. I'm telling you, there are so many, so many, so many, so many angles that, that you could take. So here, of course, VAT is lower. 
And of course, one of the key reasons that VAT is lower is people physically couldn't spend. They couldn't spend in many shops earlier on, um, certainly before phase two. And um, also a lot of people were buying online. If people were buying online and they were buying goods in from the States, then of course they weren't paying VAT because VAT is a European tax. So therefore, all I simply wanted to point out to you here is that when it comes to a secondary source relating to where the government gets its money, the fiscal monitor is a very good example of a source. So in here, then, if we just wanted to very briefly, very, very briefly take a look at this, um, it says receipts in August were broadly flat, down by just 11 million euro or 0.4% on the same month last year. The cumulative performance, so this is all of the year, so January to the end of August says the cumulative performance was also down slightly with a decrease of 2.3% or 802 million year on year. So that might be a way in which that you might start a conversation around economic sustainability in the Irish government is, but how, how does it maintain a sense of being able to collect taxes? So, how, well, how does it do that? Well, how do you keep income tax high? Well, how you keep income tax high is make sure people have lots of jobs, make sure people have high paying jobs. Or the other thing, and of course, leaving elasticity aside, the other thing, of course, that you could raise income tax. But if you raise income tax, then of course, that's going to be a disincentive for people to work and a disincentive when it comes to employing people from an employer's point of view. So these are all the kind of conversations that, that can come in to an angle when you're looking at it from a government point of view. So as I mentioned, I, there's lots more in that if you want to take a look at it. However, I'm just going to leave that there from the point of view of fiscal policy that uh, you can certainly look at where is the money coming in. Then, of course, we can also look at where is the money going out. So when it looks at the money going out, where your money goes is a really useful tool here, really interactive and so on. So the biggest part of our budget, um, the, the largest amount of money spent by our government is in social protection. And if you want to know on particularly what, double click in here. And as you can see there, we have administration, pensions, working age income supports, employment supports, illness and disability, and so on. And you can double click in there again. The, and you can keep on going and keep on going. The point here is though, again, when it comes to being a government, when it comes to being a government, you, you take money in through tax. And as you can see here, primarily that's done through VAT and income tax. Also, we have corporation tax and there's other ones as well. Then you decide where to spend it. So we can see that spent across social protection and health and education and justice and agriculture. And this is repaying the national debt and paying interest and transport and, and on and on. However, how do we make that sustainable? That is at the core of this research project. How do we make that sustainable? Well, of course, what's really useful to do is first of all question well what is sustainability so if i go over here to the book and i just go on to chapter three all right just go to chapter three for a start and then i'll bring it to chapter 12 but let's go whoa okay i'm just going to speed up here let's go to chapter three chapter three and here what is sustainable sustainable development means development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of the future generations to meet their needs working now for a safe and stable future for people on our planet and considering economic social and environmental concerns that's what sustainability is ultimately that's what it comes down to and when you're a government how do you develop today without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs. So if you put, let's say you put hundreds, like you put in hundreds and hundreds of millions into, let's say, tomorrow's workforce, you're going to pour a huge amount of money into college. Massive. And then you don't put any money into preschool care, you don't put any money into primary care, primary school, and let's say very little into below junior search. Then what's going to happen? Well, that's not very sustainable. So Really, it's all about balance. How do you balance? How do you balance the future with today in such a way where it's not just about time, but also how do you balance things like the economy and the environment together? So, of course, we all know you could build massive, massive factories and produce lots and lots of goods and services and very low cost and pay people very low wages and sell them all over the world for half nothing. What would you do? The economy would get money, yeah, but you'd hurt the people. And of course, you'd hurt the environment. So how do you have that type of balance? 
So, and also, of course, people also need work-life balance. If I was in here in my office all day long, right? So I've been in here this morning since half eight. I think it was half eight. I had a call in the car on the way out first with a staff member of mine who's based in Singapore. The last call I had with you before I joined you was with the States. In between, I was dealing with people in Dublin and other parts. And uh, But imagine after this now, I would stay here and let's say I was going to work again, work again. And eventually I leave here at two in the morning and I'm back in again at eight. Another call with somebody else then I would simply wear myself down really, really quickly as well. So that is also a social concern, is that people need work-life balance and they need a balance between work and socialising, either socialising often means with other people, but, but broadly speaking, how do we have that balance? Now, now that we have spoken about where you can get your insights and sustainability, okay, so now that we know, right, we have the government which takes in money through tax and it spends money through public expenditure, takes money into tax here, then, as I say, it spends it through here. Uh, we also need to know it, it has to make choices. It simply has to make choices. Now, where we discuss this at, at length in the book is, I'm going to bring it down to chapter 12, right? Bring you way down here to chapter 12. Yes, in case any of you are thinking, yes, I know every page is in this book. Do you know how many times I read this book and changed something in it before it got out to you? All the times in the Skype calls that Brian and Trudy and I had for months and months and months to get it ready for you. But you know what? You guys are worth it. So let me bring this down to you now. Eight, nine, ten. Uh, right. No. Chapter 12. Chapter 12. Chapter 12. Okay. Um, here we go. So chapter 12 then looks at fiscal policy in the budget framework, but specifically, if you go down past the budget process, come down a little bit further here. Now, you see what measures can a government take to reduce a current budget deficit? Do you know what that question asks? Is how does a government spend sustainably? Because of course, if there is going to be, uh, if there's going to be a deficit, well, naturally enough, then you need to restore the deficit so that the government finances are sustainable. But what this part of the chapter here does is that it takes a look at the consequences of doing the two. So it takes a look at, right, if you increase indirect tax, what's the impact? It's all about the balance. So if you do one thing, how is it affected by the other thing, right? So again, all of these could be various different elements themselves of, 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 um, of research uh, research studies. So you can see all of that, all of that in there can be, can be quite helpful when it comes to how does the government act sustainably. Now, Let's leave all that aside and let's go back to what was in specifically the guidelines, okay? Go back to what was specifically in the guidelines. It referred to this link, the NESC.ie COVID-19 Delivering Sustainable Development. Now, if in the guidelines you were given this link, it's well worthwhile looking at it. And now we're going to really hone in on how do you niche down to a specific topic. So in here, what this gives you, so this is the National Economic and Social Council. This is how the government can, not just the government, how businesses and individuals and the government can respond sustainably. So as you can see down here, the COVID-19 emergency is revealing a number of further critical challenges. This is the question. How do we respond sustainably to these problems? So you can see the frailty of business as usual. So that could be like, how is business done normally and what needed to change? So what needed to change is I was due to be in Belgium last weekend to deliver a trade show and I ended up, of course, not going because I couldn't go and I'd have, well, I could, but then I'd have to quarantine there and here and everything. So instead, what I needed to do was I needed to pre-record what I was going to present that time in Belgium. It was going to be all around the economics of the property market in Belgium. And as a result, I had to do things differently. Secondly, um, it may be about the fact that our staff had to work from home. They've always done that in our case, so that wasn't really a whole lot of difference. But the point is, is that the fact that we had enabled people to work from home meant that we were a more sustainable business. Another thing, my university students from the middle of March, just like you guys, they couldn't be in, in lectures with me. Therefore, we had to design a range of peer learning and active learning activities so that they were going to be highly engaged while learning online. There are just three tiny examples from my life as an owner of a business, an employer, somebody who supplies to other businesses, particularly is very export focused. I would have traveled around about 50 flights a year. 
last time I was on a flight was 2nd of February and I doubt I'm going to be on any flights in 2020. So that is the frailty of business as usual. How do you adapt? How do you change? So that is the way in which you can look at, at any one of these, right? So the human, economic and social costs that have put dramatically on view. Now, whoever asked me about qualitative and quantitative, there's so many questions coming in and, and it's brilliant and keep them coming, but I just can't remember exactly who said what. But specifically, what I will say is the person who asked about qualitative or quantitative, it's very hard to do quantitative research on something like, you know, um, social, something to do with social cost. Like, how would you put the cost on maybe, um, the, what's the social cost of, let's say, you guys not being in school? Not the educational cost, not the economic cost, the actual social cost. How, how, do, you, how, do, you do, how do you measure that? You don't measure it with a ruler or a calculator or a spreadsheet but you measure it by how people tell you they felt or by telling you the intensity of how they how they felt. So that's where, you know, I would be careful about and, and really taking the time to think, well, which is better? Is it quantitative or is it qualitative? And again, all of this is in the book. So you'll, you'll see that. You'll see that and you'll know the questions to ask to, to get to that point. So as you can see here, that there's there's a range of, of, of elements that are in that are in this in this link. And this link, by the way, just again, it's given to you here in the document itself, right? But it also gives you a suggestion of what are the opportunities to do things differently and more sustainably going forward. All of these, of course, could be individual, government or business. So when somebody said to give an example of a research topic, I don't need to give you any examples at all. The link does it. Uh, the link does it. Like, for example, you have, um, here. well, actually, here's one. Flexible working. There is an example. You have investing in the local economy. There is another example. Um, community energy. There is another example. So the, the actual link provided by the documents in the first place gives you um, a specific way in which you can look at the way in which sustainability needs to be at the core around the way in which um, to handle the the outcome um, or the, the ongoing impact of, of COVID-19. Now, continuing on from that, I then thought about, well, how could I give you or how, like, not me, how, how could the government give you a way in which to understand what it's thinking, right? Because again, go, like, you know, go back to the question on sustainable development for Irish government policy. Like, what is the government's policy? What is the government's policy in relation to COVID-19 and particularly in the case of sustainability? Like, what is the policy? And this is where by the way, I'm going to give you all the links in the in the follow up article. OK, so don't worry about that. I'll, I'll give you all them. Is this is when you actually look at uh, maybe I don't know it already thought I did. Uh, yeah, this is it. This is now. Oh, that's not what I'm talking about. That that one is there anyway. But no, it's it's not that I am looking for. Uh, the resilience plan, the rest of the countries is level two. That's a graphic. No, that's not what I'm looking for. It's the actual resilience plan. I was going to tell you not to be uh, view the plan. Say so this is it. Yes, 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 yes. This is what I'm looking for. Okay, now please don't be scared <laughs> when you see this. Right, it's 60 pages long, but don't worry, don't worry about that. Do you know what's a super, super, super tool? Is Control F, and in here you might look for Econ. Here we go, developing economic resilience. So for any of you who might want to take a specific economic resilience approach, of course, there's public service delivery. There is also, um, there's also, uh, there's the re uh, any of you who's into tech like me, love technology. As you can see here, there's a piece in here about the government's approach to making research technology and innovation more sustainable as a result of what's gone on with COVID-19. So, um, so you can see, so if I go on here to uh, economic, economic resilience, Developing economic resilience. Um, here you go. Here is a, your chapter. Uh, there you can see all the details here about the employment wage subsidy scheme. You can also see about the illness benefit and also the other existing business supports. So again, no matter what element that you look for, um, there's 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 an angle in here. There's some help in here around how the the Irish government is planning to make res, make the economy more resilient. And, and also Ireland more resilient. Um, just again, for those of you in like, I just saw this, thought it was cool, um, e-healthcare. Yeah, so this is investment in e-health, for example. So this is how 
um, this is a way in which like I had to go to the doctor and unfortunately the hospital, not with COVID, but just with <laughs> another issue anyway, over uh, at the height of lockdown. And I was treated on the phone. You know, the doctor prescribed whatever she needed to prescribe to me on the phone and then uh, emailed the prescription into the chemist. And then I had to go to hospital after that. And that was all done. Not the hospital bit was done online, but the communication was all done online. Like this is all video consultation systems. This I could have been ultimately, I could have just been clicked on a link and then a doctor in the hospital could have, you know, examined me or asked me the questions or triage me or whatever the word might have been. Um, in terms of that's a way in which to make healthcare, that's a way in potentially to obviously not have people in the same place. It's a way in which Ireland could lead the way. Um, and there's lots of research around this particular area, but this could also be a growing area of healthcare in Ireland. It could reduce cost, could improve the quality of care, could improve the timeliness of care. So as you can see, there's loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of examples in that report uh, all around how the government is planning to make Ireland more sustainable. And of course, then if you're taking an individual or a business approach, simple, you can simply look into the areas of an example like this report and see, well, how does that affect me? So as, a, here's an example, as, an, as a person, as an individual, as an individual, let me get the training, where's the 200 million? Yeah, look at this. So as an individual, maybe I want to upskill, okay? So there's a 200 million investment in training, skills, development, and activation measure for those who've lost their jobs. From an individual level, that's really important. The stay and spend initiative. So maybe as an individual, somebody might choose to be to choose even after even after COVID-19 they may choose to have more staycations to boost the Irish economy and to travel less um the, you have the tourism adaptation fund down here uh, as a business and actually I've started to feel this already you know we've been sending out businesses in September and some you know we didn't change we we should have we should have we didn't change the rate of VAT on our um on our invoices and companies start coming back to say no actually remember the VAT has been dropped from this level to this level so um, we needed to fix our invoices accordingly so that report 60 pages long but just focus on what you need and it's all around the government's plan to make ireland more resilient okay the last thing i want to mention i'm going to go back to the questions then and i'll answer as many as i can up until eight o'clock uh is this i love this <laughs> it's just a, a couple of simple graphs out on the irish times two days ago from cliff taylor um and these are five our Ireland's COVID economy in five graphs. So here you see the unemployment as a percentage of the workforce. Now, you all, like any of you that have studied the employment chapter, it's 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 probably that was one of Brian's favorite chapters in it. Is when you look at unemployment and look how could the government maintain people in jobs as much as possible? Well, number one, the temporary wage subsidy scheme, of course. And secondly, how do you make sure people still have purchasing power? Another economic concept is increase the level of social welfare which of course was the pandemic unemployment payment collapse and projected recovery in domestic demand um i'm going to get down to this one here uh government revenue and spending here's a big gap here this is called the deficit uh how do you how do you make that more sustainable how how do you do that this goes back to how you tax and how you spend how how do you make that more sustainable over here um industrial production now this i thought was interesting for any of you who it sounds like a number of you would like to look at this internationally. So output in modern multinational denominated, sorry, dominated sectors like pharma, chemicals and medical devices continue to rise. But in more traditional sectors, output is down sharply. So the strength in multinational sectors has protected better paid jobs and tax revenues. There you go. Look at that. Look at that. The strength in multinational sectors has protected better paid jobs and tax revenues. How do we make that more sustainable? Do we encourage more multinationals to come to Ireland? Do we train, retrain people, spend some of that 200 million creating the talent pool for those for those incoming jobs? Do we um, do we create more grants for our our Irish sector? Do we create more um, uh, more innovation grants between businesses and universities so that we can create more innovation to create those uh, modern multinational jobs? where the indigenous company becomes the multinational company. This is, there, there is telling you, that is a way in which the income tax has actually been really helped out big time by having the better paid jobs. And where do you get the better paid jobs? Some are multinationals, 
Some, of course, are Indigenous Irish companies and so on from there. Then you have the COVID-19 adjusted monthly unemployment estimates as well. So there are five graphs just, and there's like two lines of text underneath. You could always um, choose one of those as well, of course, as your secondary research. So I know I have thrown a lot at you, but I know you were well able for it. And um, next, of course, in the next webinar, I will look at a different angle. I might just run a quick poll actually to see which one you'd prefer, whether I'd look at business or individual, just to get a sense of what you think, because ultimately I am here to help you as opposed to anything else. So now I'm going to go back to the questions and uh, I'm just going to, um, I'm going to ask you that, uh, actually, no, I won't, I won't ask you that, I won't ask you that um, because it might just take take some time away. Oh, sorry, yes, before before I go answering all of the questions, I do want to give you a way that if any of you want to um, keep in contact with either with me or more, far more importantly, of course, is with the information that I'm sharing. So first of all, to answer Michelle's question, positiveeconomics.ie. This is the website. Oh, this is the website over here. And I am just going to dock everything there now. Sorry, again, I'll just go back here one more time. So I'm going to click OK. And so all of the previous, all of the previous um, recordings are all over here. OK, so they're all over there on the blog. Um, and of course, the reason that we invite you to sign up for this is that then you'll know about the upcoming webinars. So they're all there. You see this housing um, exports one. I did one in the gender pay gap. All of these were on COVID-19. Now, I also do a range of things on my own Facebook page. So for those of you on Facebook, or I'm on Instagram as well, <laughs> just in case you're thinking, oh, do I have to get on Facebook? No, you don't. No, you don't at all. Uh, so, sorry. Um, so if facebook.com forward slash the positive economist. So as you can see, this is where I had the details of this webinar and this is where I was interviewing this guy here. He runs uh, Fitzpatrick's Hotel in New York. And this is where uh, a woman called Anna Dehu talks about the future of the world of, of work and so on. I was uh, uh, moderating a session for them. Down here is where I have my podcast. This is a woman, again, actually from New York. Just seems to be a New York theme here at the moment. Um, uh, anyway, there's a range of other things there. This is the one I was telling you about actually in, in Belgium. So. You can always, of course, if you want to like the page, you certainly can. On Instagram, I am simply Susan, Susan, the positive, okay, sorry, let me get there. Susan, no, positive economist. If you search for that, you'll find me. Uh, there you go, Susan, the positive economist. So um, this is, you know, the Phoenix Park there yesterday and so on. So I do a lot of videos there and so on, and of course, the other place that you can find a range of other things that I do is on the website itself, thepositiveeconomist.com. So as you can see here, um, all I write lots and lots and lots and lots of articles there with lots of content and uh, lots of secondary resources and so, so on. OK, so God, I can tell you, I'm clearly seeing I don't need any poll to sell. Uh, there's a load of you here checking in me on Instagram and, and you're more than welcome to. Please do. It's a, it'd be lovely to hear from you. So Susan, the positive economist on Instagram, um, the positive economist.com is the website address. And I've my own newsletter there. Some of you might have heard about this through there. And as I mentioned, uh, they're on on um, Facebook as well. OK, now let's go back then. Let's go back. And now for the last couple of minutes, I am going to take a look at your questions. And. OK, so uh, Lisa, I had left uh, had yours. Um, OK, so uh, Conan says, what are the penalties for going slightly over or under the 1500 word mark? Um, I don't know. It doesn't say anything about that, actually, Conan. So it's a good, good point. Uh, oh, I'm after going all over uh, all over my questions here. So I can't uh, can't quite. Well, I have no idea is the answer to that. Sarah said writing in the third person. Do you know what I'm going to say there, Sarah, is wait and see what the digital completion booklet looks like and see who it's addressed to. So is it is it addressed to a person? Like, do you think? Or so, you know, that might be worthwhile to see. Is this 10 step quick guide in the research booklet? Absolutely, Catherine. Absolutely. And Brian came up with it. Brian came up with it as well. So absolutely. How do you get primary research that isn't biased, says Rebecca? Um, 
Rebecca, it probably will be biased. I mean, that's what primary research is. You're asking people for their thoughts on different things, you know. Now, Trudy, Trudy is, Trudy has gone through, oh, I don't know how many academic qualifications. She wrote the section particularly on that part. So there'll be a lot of information on that. Um, Una says, if picking research topic one and business, do students have to refer to all business, local, national and international, or just one? Mm. It'd be too hard to do all business anyway, uh, all whether it's local, national or international. So Una, I think what you're going to need to do there is they're going to have to, it really is back to the research topic itself. Like for example, if you were to talk about a tourism business in Ireland, um, that might have a relatively similar experience to a tourism business in let's say Germany, right? Um, whereas on the other hand, there's certain sectors in Ireland that have opened more slowly than in other countries. Um, so sometimes, like I just think it, it's it's kind of too hard to specifically answer that. Um, I, and I, you know, okay, I'm going to take an executive decision here. I'm going to run the next session with you on the business the business side of things. So I'll have a think about it between now and then. But um, I would say it, it, it's all down to, it's all down to the concept. Uh, Deborah says, complete over four to six weeks. Martin says, can you compare two different companies and their approach to adapting COVID? I would imagine, Martin, that's primary research then. So can you? I don't know. I'm only going by the same guidelines as you, but uh, certainly, um, certainly that sounds like a primary research point of view. Again, you just need to substantiate it and make sure everything in the digital completion booklet when released is full. Um, okay, next part again. Another question with the word count. I can't really do. Uh, I can't really do anything about that. It, I have no idea how the marks are going to be are going to be allocated in terms of any type of a penalty there. Um, Shauna says, to what extent do you think the aims in the introduction need to be related to the learning outcomes of the syllabus? Um, well, I don't know what extent, Shauna, but what you really need to make sure is that it's related to an economic concept so how you do that is up to you and your students um isabel can you talk about international businesses or do you have to look at no local local national and international businesses let's go back to the wording let's go back over here to the wording uh now it says r there so our business decisions at a local national or international level so it says r um, again, I'll you know I'll leave it up to you to to make up your own decision after that. Um, Breed, uh, in the research topics, both of them state potential implications. Can you get further in explanation? Of this, I'd love if you could, Breed. Um, I'd love if you could. Well, I suppose that is it says state. Oh, sorry, no, no, both of them state potential implications. Um, I I've no idea how to get further explanation on that, but um, I suppose ultimately that is the research. I suppose. Um, Eamon says, what is my understanding of sustainability? Eamon, and that's where I brought you back to the definition in the book. It's my understanding anyway. Uh, Sean says, so many, sorry for so many questions, don't worry about that at all. Are we reading the topics as the impact of COVID on sustainable development and what this means for individual behaviour, business choice or government policy, or are the decisions of individuals, businesses in response to COVID sustainable? I feel like it's not clear, clear which. I cannot provide any more clarity than that, Shauna. Um, I would just take take what's there and uh, and build build your research accordingly. Again, perhaps the the digital completion booklet when that comes out will be helpful too. Um, Dara says, what's stopping students from doing the project in groups but doing an individual report if you're only marking the report? I didn't. I've no idea, Dara. I didn't set it. Um, so I uh, have no idea. Ross says, what is the other category including in the chart? Oh, um, Dara, do you mean in the uh, Ross, do you mean in the in the in the state the, the statement um in the fiscal monitor? I'm anticipating. Do you know what? I don't need to anticipate. Why do I need to anticipate when it's right here? Um what I would suggest in here is your tax, your other taxes are motor tax and customs receipts. And then your capital taxes are stamp duty, capital gains tax, and capital acquisitions tax. All of that is there in the document, and that one is only 28 pages long. See, people like me love this stuff. This is, I'm not joking you. I'm really not joking when I tell you, this is what people who work in economics and um, in industry do all the time. This is this is my world all the time. Uh, Michelle says, do you think the SDG should be in, in 
uh, the student's line of inquiry, well, they certainly feed into sustainability, Michelle. So, um, I mean, the interpretation of sustainability could include SDGs, you know, so uh, I, I could see how I could see how it could fit in there. Um, but again, I would go back to the NESC document and, and start from there and, and look outside then. Uh, Rachel says, do you think we have to hit all three pillars of sustainability or could we focus on one? I know they're connect interconnected, 1500 words will come fast. Rachel, it does. As I say, I wrote two of these um, in anticipation of publishing the book and it does, 1500 come, comes a lot. So I think you have, it again comes back to what you're trying to achieve. Like what are you trying to achieve within the research study and what economic concept um, relates to that? Um, if you're in an Irish school, can you cite articles in English? Katie asks me. Good question, Katie. I, I don't know. Um, I go back and I maybe check again. The, the guidelines are there. Um, Siobhan says individual. Okay, Siobhan. Yeah, that's the one. I I I will. I'll do. I'll do. Um, I'll do. I'll do business first, since it seems to be where a lot of the questions are coming from. Um, Peter says thank you. That was so helpful. You're more than welcome, Peter. Could one focus on the agri sector for the report? Again, Martin, it's just how you structure your argument. Um, if sustainability includes economic, social, environment, yeah, okay, so I've, I've, I've referred to that. Uh, Robert says, thanks a million. Susan, would you incorporate the pillars of sustainability in your answer or would you focus on? Yeah, so that seems to be coming up coming up there, there quite a bit. So I, I might have a think about that uh, for the next webinar as well, um, just around the three different pillars and weaving something around that. But I don't know whether you would have to include all of them, but it's uh, it's certainly something to 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 consider. I'm not saying you do or you don't. I don't know, but um, it's it that might actually be a good question for if if any of you uh, all of the teachers out there, if you're going to the PDST um, sessions, that's where you could ask that. Uh, Robert says, do you have any more tips on keeping? Yeah, <laughs> good good question, Robert. Do you have any tips on keeping the line of inquiry narrow as opposed to having it too broad? I'll tell you, Robert. You see, I've done this right. I did the, I did two research reports in, as I say, in preparation for writing the book. It was the key thing that I said I would do, and Brian and Trudy took different parts, but I took on actually writing a research reports, research study and reports. I did both, right? I did two of them, and it's very easy to go to go too broad. It's very easy, but what you need to do, just like I did with you tonight, is go back to what you want to achieve in the first place, because fifteen hundred words can turn into four and a half thousand. And I know some of you might think, yeah, right, as if I would be caught writing three times as much, I'm telling you, it can happen. So the, the key tip I'd have, and I'll, I'll talk to you more about this as, as the months go on, but is just focus on what you need to achieve. Focus, 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 focus. And if you feel yourself going off, you know, just bring it, bring it right back in again. Um, Peter says, how do you have all the time for that? Fair play is positive. <laughs> if I was answering that for you now, Peter, we'd be here for a while. Uh, um, Ross says the 2020 total expenditure was 80.4 billion. What do you predict the 2021 total expenditure to be and how will it have an influence on the national debt of 230 billion? Well, Ross, that is an interesting research inquiry. Uh, I haven't, I can't predict it at all. I, I tell you, you couldn't predict what will happen in October at the moment, never mind anymore. Um, but there, there are some really interesting questions. Like now you're already focusing on a line of inquiry and you can bring in your concepts like national debt, um, fiscal policy, of course, um, debt servicing, um, how taxes may have to change in relation to that, the four canons of taxation. Like there's loads and loads you could do with that, that question alone. Um, okay, uh, Mark, so thanks a million, very useful, much appreciated. You're so welcome. Uh, Cal says, for the first choice, it says individual, business or business at local. Can you touch on both? Again, it's how you structure, how you structure, Cal. Uh, is the research project meant to be done? Ashling, I in class with the teacher. That is, I would talk to your teacher directly about that and um and see see how they would how they they take that. Emma, can I choose a health sector company and go from there in topic one? It's again, it's up to you how you structured Emma. So I can't give you permission or not. Ronan, could you compare the Irish government's policy with another country's government with regards to economic sustainability? Um, as long as you have the economic argument to back it up. Uh, that uh, it's certainly an, an angle for sure, but it's uh, you do need to make sure that you can carry it through the whole way through the 10 steps. When will the next webinar be? Uh, the next webinar, Tudor, is going to be in October. Um, we're just waiting on, like we'd love if there was more information available for you, because then of course we would be in a position to be more helpful. Um, so 
the answer is October and we'll we'll determine the date as soon as we can. Um, Lawrence says, can there be green tax credits transparency for renewable energy? Um, potentially. Um, yeah, I'm sure that there may be, may be uh, potentially, but I wouldn't be able to answer that directly for you, Lawrence. And also, um, I would say it's I would say that you would probably need to go further afield um, uh, than, than looking directly for an answer for that uh, in the same way. Kira says, thanks a million, Susan, very helpful. You're so welcome, Kira. You really are. Shauna says, so can the lines of inquiry be speculative? Um, so, Shauna, what I would say there is that you just, when the research booklet comes through, like that's when you really need to look at what the lines of inquiry um, are. And, and how to build them. So you said what can happen instead of what has happened. Okay, let's go back and look at the wording. The wording says are required on the potential implications. So yeah, that sounds like what can happen um, of the COVID-19 crisis, potential implications on sustainable development. Uh, okay, so where to find the 10 steps quick guide, Sarah Jane says in the book, in the digital complete, or sorry, not the digital completion, the research study booklet that will be on EDCO Learning uh, very, very shortly, Sarah Jane, um, you know, check that. Emmanuel says, would focusing on the responses to COVID-19 be straying too far from economics and the research topic? Remember, as long as it's a research study in line with an economic concept that has a line of inquiry related to the guidelines, then you figure out your own scope. Um, Mia, how up-to-date do students have to be on current affairs for the exam? Um, I can't I can't it's, it's a very broad question um Mia it's a very very broad question but I will do my best to be with you every month between now and the exam and we'll we'll see how we get on Edna says thanks Susan great webinar thank you so much for this this has helped so much because our teacher couldn't explain this as well I was so confused ah <laughs> uh, you're very, uh, you're very welcome um and uh thank you for that okay I think that I have gotten to now to the end of the question so on that note I'm going to say thank you all for tuning in Really, uh, really delighted to be to be here with you, and uh, I'd love to see you all again next month. Uh, we're going to be back, going to be back in back in action. All going well. Hopefully, we'll have more information. I will take a specific theme again. We'll take a look at, at the the project. We'll see what else, what other information. We'll see what else has happened. We do our very best for you, and but in in other ways, our it's really been lovely to spend the last hour with you. Really do appreciate your time and attention, and to you all. Uh, oh, sorry, Judy asked, will this be available to look at later? Absolutely, Judy. Absolutely. I'll be putting together a short briefing document on this. It'll be on the thepositiveeconomist.com and Positive Economics. And of course, I will also make sure that I tweet it. Oh, I never told you that I'm on Twitter as well, at Susan Hayes underscore. But it sounds like the whole lot of you are on Instagram anyway. OK, thank you all and good night.